Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of my Gear Up Ultimate Iron Man. My Gear Up Ultimate Iron Man account is all about progressing through the game in a unique way, creating a brand new way to play the game that not many other people have experienced before. I'm going to be obtaining every piece of combat gear in order from strongest to weakest. That is going to include some very strange pieces of gear. Right now I'm working on ranged combat and there are a few interesting upgrades uh, that I'll need to get early that are kind of in a weird order. For example, the barbed bolt. Only a 12 strength bonus for an arrow makes it one of the weakest in the game. However, to make it, I need 50 plus fletching and access to the ranging guild. But there are a few interesting hiccups I need to work through this episode, but I am having a lot of fun doing it. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the series. If you are, I would appreciate it if you left a video like, and let's get started. Now, at the end of the last episode, I was working towards level 29 Hunter uh, for the Swamp Lizard, but once I got there, I realized uh, very shortly after I would need a higher Hunter level anyway. So we went all the way until 47 Hunter on the Swamp Lizards, and that will be enough to get the Desert Lizard, which will be coming up here pretty soon. It is a terribly rainy day in Canada today. Well, it's a pretty broad statement, but where I am, it is a monsoon for a couple days now actually. Everything today just kind of feels wet. We ran over to the desert so hopefully that will make me feel a bit drier. What we need from here is a, a desert lizard. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, I didn't know this, but apparently swamp lizards are actually better training. Even though desert lizards give more experience, it has something to do with the catch rate I think. Regardless, all we need is one and there we go. That is going to be a desert lizard and a, another upgrade for ranged. Now initially I thought the ranging weapon would be the most challenging thing to upgrade, but it turns out it could actually be the ammunition. We'll have a look at that in a minute, but there are some really strange things I need to unlock early to get through the ammunition gear upgrades. While we're in Varrock, we can upgrade a few items here. We have the maple longbow as well as the maple shortbow. And I'm probably actually going to be using the Maple Shortbow for a little while now. It's not a terrible weapon, and while I can unlock the Dorgishin Crossbow fairly soon now, I won't be able to use any meaningful ammunition for it for quite a while. Now, what am I making next, you might be asking? Well, I am creating a Blurite Crossbow. I don't think I've ever made this item ever. I don't think most people have ever touched this item. It's about the same strength as an iron crossbow, so it's pretty weak, but it can actually fire blurite bolts if one had the crazy idea that they were going to go mine enough blurite to make bolts. You can tell I'm an ultimate ironman and have no idea what I'm doing uh, because I'm using the barbarian village uh, spinning wheel. <laughs> I don't think I've ever used this spinning wheel either, but there we go. We have created a Blurite crossbow. Looks pretty badass. If we just kind of lowered our color setting on our monitor, it would actually kind of look like a rune crossbow. I just came to the agility pyramid for money and now I just got into this high octane race uh, with this guy back here. Uh, no stakes at all. I'm very impressed I got up there without missing a single obstacle. Now I've had these iron darts for a while now and uh, well, I kind of want to use them to get a bit of early game ranged experience. However, my defense level is actually so low that I'm using the defensive mode on the darts to get just a bit of defensive experience. And there is level 25 defense. We can now wear uh, frog leather armor, uh, which we'll probably go make next. From now, we're going to train on rapid. We are losing quite a few darts because I'm not picking them up every time. But I'm hoping this should get us to at least 40 range, which would be a nice place to start training using other weapons. Right now, my best armor is the leather body. Kind of unfortunate, but one thing I forgot about is you can actually go ahead and buy the studded body right from the armor shop. I was originally going to wait until I could craft it, however, we can go ahead and buy it right here, which means the only other item I need is the hard leather body, which I actually do have the crafting level to go ahead and make, and that's going to be worth it. So all I need to do is go kill a cow, and then I can upgrade all the way to the frog leather body. And we have the cow hide already, we'll go ahead and make a hard leather, and then a hard leather body. There we go, that is a armor upgrade times three, going from the hard leather body to the studded body, all the way up to the frog leather body, which is a fairly serious upgrade, and I'm looking pretty dope. I just actually hit level 40 ranged at rock crabs. We only have around 1.2 thousand darts left, but that is a really awesome milestone. 40 will allow us to get into the ranging guild, which, <laughs> surprise, surprise, I'm going to need much sooner than I originally thought I would. I don't actually know if I've ever gone in the ranging guild before. We're gonna do a few early game upgrades on my ammunition slot, which again is turning out to be a very challenging one. First up here we have the training arrows, which 
pretty easy to get. We just get them from the tutor and we'll go ahead and once again destroy them uh, right in front of her. Not very nice. Okay, from there we have bronze arrows, iron arrows, and bronze bolts. Those are fairly easy to obtain. We can just buy a few of them from the archery shop. No problem. Uh, we actually may start using iron arrows because uh, the maple short bow in iron arrows I think is going to be a little bit better than grinding out for iron knives as the time taken to create them I think vastly outweighs just being able to buy them. Okay, but then after that we have the bronze brittle. Okay, we'll need to do uh, I think maybe Zogre Flesh Eater to do that or maybe uh, Big Chompy Bird Hunting. But then we have the barbed bolt. Again, a bit of an issue. We need 51 fletching for that. But the real kicker here is the tars. For example, the Guam tar, the Marental tar, and the Terramin tar are all before we can use a bone bolt. And I'm going to need 30-ish herb lore, which is a big pain in the ass for me to get now. And I'm still kind of thinking of the best way to do that. Okay, well, one thing I definitely need to get done is Druidic Ritual. So we're going to go ahead and collect all of the meat. And then we can at least get some passive herb lore experience from any quests we do, uh, quest lamps or anything like that. Because like I said, we will eventually need mid-30s in our herb lore level, which is easy to get via questing eventually. Now we're finally starting off Druidic Ritual and it is important to do this early as there are quite a few experience lamps that can be put in any skill and I want to get as much experience in Herb Lore because it is very useful and one of the hardest to level up for an Ultimate Ironman. I would say by far the hardest and very inventory stressful as well. And we got Druidic Ritual done. There's level 3 Herb Lore, a nice start. Even if we could get our Herb Lore level to 10 or 12, at least then the XP lamps uh, will be useful as opposed to right now they're kind of wasted. Now the next quest I want to do is Big Chompy Bird Hunting, as I will need it to get quite a few pieces of ranged gear. Next up here I do need to get the Ogre Comp Bow, uh, which does require that quest. So we need 30 cooking for that, which I'm just going to do a little bit of fly fishing. Not the most ideal cooking method, but I need my fishing level up anyway. What's really nice about this location is there is a permanent fire, uh, which, there we go, there's level 30 cooking, that is enough to start the quest. Now later on, when I actually need to grind out cooking, the Hosidius Kitchen is a very good option. As you can get quite high experience rates and you don't need any ingredients, you just kind of run around the kitchen. And you can get very competitive rates, especially for an ultimate Ironman. Okay, somehow I lost my Draymon staff. I don't know how that happened. I think I just dropped it by accident. So I have to go get it back. And this is going to be my very first suicide. Now, if you go to the Lumbridge Cave and you don't have a light source, you will slowly die. Uh, which is very convenient as Lumbridge is my home teleport location already. And my spawn location, which means I can just run down here in a few seconds pick up the things I need and then come back here after and there's a really easy teleport to get here. All right, there we go. First death of the account. We know it'd be really interesting, a hardcore ultimate Iron Man. That would be messed up, but really the original way it was meant to be played. Okay, we headed up. We're here to start off the big chompy bird hunting quest and there's no notable reward from it, but we'll need it for the recipe for disaster quest line eventually and uh, there is two items I need from it, both the regular ogre bow and the comp ogre bow as well as the ability to make brutals is going to require this quest anyway, and I'll need those fairly soon, so I'm going to go ahead and get it done now. Okay, we're finally getting a bit of use out of this maple short bow. I think my max hit right now is 5, maybe 6. Definitely not the best bow and arrow right now, but it's passable until I get the Dorkshin crossbow. Alright, that is the quest done. We got two quest points, uh, 1400 cooking experience, a bit of ranged experience. Nothing that useful, except for actually, that is now 31 cooking, which is a, another quest requirement out of the way. As well as I did get the Ogre Bow right off the bat. Actually, is a plus 9 ranged bonus over what I have right now. And there's level 58 agility. I'm kind of thinking I may not actually get the a Graceful set completed on this course. We'll have to see. We have 56 marks of grace. Uh, which means we can afford the legs very soon here. And that will just leave us around 90 marks after that. And there we, this is going to be our third to last piece and the most expensive one at that. Really happy to get most of this grind done with. That only leaves us the top and the hood. And we'll chuck those on now. The only problem with getting the graceful set right now is, is restricting our inventory space. But once we get the full one, of course, we can store it, which I'm going to do almost immediately after. Now, one item slot that is really important to upgrade uh, is the glove slot. The weakest ranged glove is actually part of the recipe for disaster quest. So we're going to go ahead and start that off. Uh, we've already done Cook's Assistant, and now we can finally use his stupid oven, which I've gotten fooled by a couple times. I believe I could probably get three or maybe four of the subquests done fairly soon. All right, uh, I was freaking out here for a minute because I thought I maybe had to brew a green man's ale, which would have taken a long time. 
but <laughs> luckily there's a, a bartender that sells it, thank god. And another thing here that I never knew about is there is a crate of Rotten Tomatoes here that you actually can purchase them from. Never knew about this guy, didn't know there's a Rotten Tomato shop. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab one of these two. There's a lot of weird items going into a Dirty Fruit Blast, which I've never actually collected before. Normally just buy it on the Grand Exchange. Okay, there we go. We got the Another Cook's Quest completed, which is the beginning of the Recipe for Disaster subquest. So now we're treated to the longest cutscene in the entire game. I think it's like two and a half minutes. Another item that's a bit challenging to get is charcoal, uh, which the only viable store was Jimua's jungle store in Karamja. And also one thing I forgot about last episode is the machete. Actually, I don't know how this happened. The machete actually is a weaker strength bonus than the bronze spear, uh, which is the last item that I went for. Uh, so there we go, we kind of filled in the thing I missed. So I guess that is another melee weapon upgrade. And that is going to be our very first subquest completed, giving us a thousand cooking, crafting, and uh, farming experience, getting us a level 20 farming, and of course the bronze gloves. Now interestingly, uh, the hard leather gloves didn't actually show up on OSR's best in slot, so I guess there are probably some items that I'm missing, but we went ahead and bought it for good measure anyway. Now, I really like the Skybox plugin, but man, that staircase just looks like I'm gonna fall off the world <laughs> if I walk down there. Uh, we just finished up the fishing contest quest, getting us all the way to 38 fishing, as well as it being a prerequisite quest. Okay, we now have access to the rock cake, which will be really nice when we get around to doing Nightmare Zone. As I don't have the ice gloves, we can actually just uh, telekinetic grab it, uh, which actually just got us a magic level. And from here we just need to kill an Ice Fiend, which will cool it immediately and we can go ahead and finish the quest. There is the second prereq done for Recipe for Disaster, getting us 32 cooking as well as uh, 13 Slayer, there we go. Okay, so that will unlock the Iron Gloves, and then after that the next best pair of gloves is actually just the Leather Gloves for ranged, which uh, are really easy to make, so we'll just go do that after. Okay, so we now have the Iron Gloves, which means we can go ahead and drop the Bronze ones. There is level 46 ranged, we are almost done with the iron darts we made last episode, but they got us quite a few ranged levels which I am really happy with. Now one thing that has been kind of plaguing my inventory for a couple days now, or a couple weeks really, is that the skull scepter top and bottom piece that I have, as I need all four pieces to combine it into the skull scepter, uh, which is one of the magical staves that I need to upgrade through the magic tree. Now the last monster I have been trying to kill here is the Catapalon, uh, which actually has a pretty high defensive level for what it is. But I think our range level is finally high enough that we do enough damage to it and we can buy the iron arrows very cheaply. So I think I'm going to go kill it. It's a 1 in 30 drop rate. Realistically shouldn't take too long, although I think I've killed 60 of them already. Okay, well there's level 50 range. We've gotten two range levels so far. This has taken a lot of time. I think we're like four times the drop rate right now. Kind of ridiculous, but uh, I don't know, it's not bad range training and it's not costing me too much. Wow, there it is. That took actually like three or four hours to get that drop. That is ridiculous. I think we must have killed like 200 of them for a 1 in 30 drop. But I guess that isn't the worst thing to go dry on. Okay, we'll combine them together. Now we have the Skull Scepter, which unfortunately isn't that useful. Uh, it only has five teleports on it by default, which is kind of ridiculous for how much time it takes. The only benefit here is it actually is a diary requirement, so we'll use the teleport at least once. Well, I guess we might as well use all of them, really. Okay, on my recorder, I clearly messed this up because I came back and I had a nine-hour recording still in progress so I think uh, I think I just made the leather van braces which is a gear upgrade although the iron gloves are a bit more well-rounded but I want to reiterate that the main benefit of the ranging gear is it's very cheap and easily replaceable so having to drop stuff is really not that big a deal okay there is another piece of graceful there is 55 marks of grace I managed to get all of this while playing divinity original sin 2 with my friends how is that for multitasking? Okay, there we go. We got the graceful top, which just leaves us with one more piece of graceful being the hood. And we'll have completed the entire set around a seven or eight hour process, but totally worth it. And we're getting a decent amount of agility experience. We may even get 60 by the time we're done. Okay, so now I want to actually take a bit of a break from agility and we're going to train our construction up a bit. Sadly, that means dropping a fair bit of stuff in my inventory. This golf scepter, we used to teleport on it already. Yes, five teleports is kind of nice, but not important by any means. And we're going to drop the rest of our frog leather. Now, I could have gotten a looting bag, but in my opinion, not worth it for that amount of gear right now. But anyway, I want to do a new construction method 
Now I have three games necklaces already and they are fairly easy to create just from items you can get from a shop. So what I'm going to be doing is teleporting to the Barbarian Outpost with the games necklace. And up here there's actually a spawn of four different planks. Now I'm going to go ahead and pick those up until I have a full inventory of planks or around 20 of them. And then from there we're going to teleport to our house. We're going to create some oak larders or maybe a bookcase. And then I'll teleport back with the games necklace. Now I believe this will be a lot quicker than the other construction method I was doing which required a lot of running. All we need right now is 40 construction which really won't take very long with this method. I'm predicting maybe 20k construction experience an hour. And I forgot my nails. 